Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you again this evening to our midweek service here at Fellowship Church. So delighted that you can be with us. Praise God. We hope that you're having a great week as we move forward into this summer. I know that uh, all of us are looking forward to opportunities to be able to gather in the name of Jesus together without concerns and so on and so forth. But uh, I tell you what, we're moving just exactly uh, in that direction. So we're thankful for that. We're also looking forward to these summer months for some things that we have planned as a church. And uh, just uh, to reunite, praise God, uh, together with people of like precious faith and to enjoy the company and companionship of of uh, like precious believers. So anyway, again, we're glad that you can be with us here this evening. And so if you have a Bible there in your living room or kitchen, wherever you find yourself, I'd like to invite you to open it to 1 Samuel chapter 30 tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to be talking about and looking at the life of David again. And uh, so many great stories uh, through the experience that David had, not only in his relationship with God, but also the challenges that he faced. And um, these things, uh, the Bible tells us, are there for our uh, admonition upon whom the ends of the earth have come. They're written for our example so that we can learn from uh, the things that these men of faith did and so that we can make an application of it in our own personal lives. And praise God, come out on top. How many of you know Jesus came to give us victory? Hallelujah. He said, I came so that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So we're going to take a look at that this evening, and I know that you'll be blessed. So <clears throat> why don't you join me uh, for a, uh, uh, a time of prayer, and let's just believe God together uh, right now. Father, we love you and thank you so very much for this privilege that we have as your children to not only gather in the name of Jesus, Father, but really to behold wonderful uh, things from your holy written word. Father God, I thank you for giving us ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to believe the word of God. Thank you, Father, for utterance in the Holy Ghost to speak, Father God, to those that are present here uh, this evening during this broadcast. And Father, I just I want to thank you in advance for your blessing. I want to thank you, Father God, for depositing something within the hearts of people that bring about change within their lives. And Father, we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Tonight, I want to talk to you about restoration and recovery. You know, some months back, uh, when we were dealing with this whole COVID thing back in March, um, I talked a little bit about this in one context. But I want to talk to you a little bit differently about it tonight. You know, Throughout the scriptures, when you read the Word of God, you will discover that we see where God brought restoration and recovery to people that were in trouble. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? You know, and not just once. I mean, throughout the scriptures, we see this, you know, when people were in need. And so many of the stories, you know, that we read, it's, it's where people experience these setbacks or loss and sometimes even ruin, you know, but, but, but we see where God brings his power and his influence into that situation to bring about restoration and recovery. So I just want you to know this evening that your God is a God of restoration and recovery. So if you find yourself in a place of need like that, I tell you what, you are in a good place with him. And not only that, it's great that you're here tonight to hear this message because I believe, praise God, that it'll build faith within your heart to move you forward into the future that God has for you and you won't end up being stuck because of this or that or the whatever. Because again, God is a God who makes things right. And the reason is, is because he's a just God. And so if you're his child and you're a believer, praise God, you're positioned for God to do the miraculous. And let me tell you, dear friend, not only can he, he wants to where your life is concerned. No, not the life of someone else. Not, you know, the story we hear about how God did something great, you know, in someone else's life. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about what God wants for you, child of God, so that you can enjoy 
all that heaven has to afford. And so maybe you've experienced loss or, you know, uh, ruin within your life and you feel this sense of discouragement, you know, and you just, you know, can't really get going. Listen, I tell you, by the end of this service, uh, you're going to get going. At least you're going to want to feel like you want to get going because praise God, I'm telling you what, God is speaking to you right now through these scriptures to encourage you, praise God, wherever it is that you may find yourself, whether you have a set, uh, setback or whatever, because I tell you what, praise God, even though you might find yourself or feel the way that you do right Right now, I tell you what, you don't have to stay that way. And that's the good news. Glory to God. Life can be different because of Jesus, because of the power of God, because of God's willingness to come to your aid and to do things in your life, praise God, that can be life-changing, life-altering. I mean, changing the whole course of your life. And that's especially true. You know, if you've experienced, you know, disillusionment or discouragement or, you know, like I said, loss in your life, this is a message for you tonight. And I tell you what, God wants you to take this thing up and he wants to have you put it within your heart as a deposit so that it's, it can be, bring about change. Now, listen, it is going to take faith. I, I'll guarantee you, you know, you're going to have to believe the Word of God. You're going to have to act on the Word of God. You're going to have to, you know, uh, obey what it is that God says in your life because, praise God, there's some things that you may be, uh, are going to have to do. But listen, recovery is, is on its way. It's, it's for you if you'll just act on what it is that you're going to learn tonight and the things that you're going to hear. And I'll give you some examples of this. You know how, how God brought his power into people's lives. I think, for example, about Ruth. You can read the story sometime, you know, there in the Old Testament. But here's a gal who marries a man that came down from, from um, uh, Israel. And uh, uh, she was in this land. And, and not only did, did her husband die, but her her uh, sister-in-law's husband or brother died, and, and so did the father of these people. So there were no men left. And, and uh, this mother-in-law of hers released the two girls to go, you know, do whatever it is that they wanted to do. But you know what? The Bible says that Ruth clung to her mother and said that wherever you go, I'll go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Now, you have to understand that really what she was consenting to was that she basically was going to become, you know, um, I guess you could say not only a widow, but one in a foreign land taking care of her mother-in-law in abject poverty. Because you have to understand that when they did get back to the land that her mother-in-law had come from, into the land of Israel, she had to go out and, and capture the gleanings or the leftovers that were in the fields just for them to be able to su uh, survive. Now, you talk about ruin, you talk about setback, you talk about being discouraged. This woman had every reason to be discouraged, but she was a person of character. She was a person that... that, that you could say feared God. And because of that, God brought a man by the name of Boaz into her life, and he became her kinsman redeemer. And he redeemed, glory to God, the loss that this woman had experienced and brought her into a land of blessing. And I tell you what, her life was never the, never the same. You know, you think about Job. I mean, here's a guy that was of some personal wealth. He had a lot of things going for him. And, and before it was over with, he lost everything everything. I said everything in the way of family and possessions, everything. You know, his health, all of these things. He lost everything, and yet God, the Bible says, turned his captivity. Hallelujah. Now, listen, that, that's what I call recovery and restoration, and gave Job back twice two times as much as he had before. Hallelujah. You know, that's the God that we serve. I mean, he is a God of restoration. He's a God of recovery, any way that you want to look at it. You know, Jairus in the New Testament is another example. Her daughter was sick, ended up dying. And Jesus turned to this man and said, don't be afraid, just believe. And God raised that man's daughter up and gave her back to him. I'm telling you, that's restoration. 
That's recovery. I even think about, you know, in one story, there was a woman from the city of Nain. And the Bible tells us that this woman, she didn't have anything. She was a widow. She'd lost her husband. The only thing she had was one single child. And they were taking him to the grave to bury him. And as this was all occurring and Jesus came into the city, they were on their way out probably to the cemetery. The Bible says that when the Lord Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her and said, don't weep. Now, now I'm telling you, that this is so powerful that, that, that God himself in the form of, of Jesus would come to this woman and speak with her personally and say, listen, I don't want you to weep anymore, you know. And then it goes on to say this, when he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still, he said, young man, I say to you, arise. Hallelujah. Everybody say arise. And this, this young man rose up, listen, and it, it says then, so uh, <clears throat> um, he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And Jesus presented his, this, this son back to this mother. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God loves raising dead things up. Maybe you feel like your life is just not what it should be. Maybe you feel like it's, you know, just dead and needs some place to go. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven that wants to give it direction, wants to breathe life back into that thing, you know. But so often, you know, the circumstances of life and the voices that are around us, they, they do everything to, to beleaguer everything that, you know, you're really wanting in your heart and trying to, you know, cause all kinds of discouragement. Friend, listen to me. I, there's another voice the voice of heaven, the voice of God's living word, the voice that God says he'll do exceedingly abundantly above even all you can ask or think because of the power that is within you. I tell you, what he needs from us is our consent. He needs faith to rise up on the inside of us to say, you know what? I'm going to believe what the living God has to say about my life and situation. I'm not going to believe all those voices that are trying to distract and to deter and to keep me from moving in the direction that God has for me. Listen to me, child of God. I'm telling you, God has an incredible plan for your life, and it's time that so many people pick it up and begin to walk with whatever it is that he has for them. Look at this story in 1 Samuel chapter 30. It's a familiar story. It's about David. And David at this time was actually uh, running from Saul because Saul had gone basically nuts and wanted to take his life. So he found himself in a place called Ziklag. He'd been over into a, a, a particular area with uh, 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 some individuals, they didn't want him around anymore, so he's on his way back home. Bible says it took him three days to get back home. But notice here in verse 1, 30th chapter, it says here that it came to pass that when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag had smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captives, and uh, that were therein, they slew not any of them. They didn't kill any of them, uh, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, their daughters were taken captive. Now think about the discouragement and the despair that these men were feeling at this moment. You talk about loss. You talk about, you know, the, the felt uh, need of ruin within their lives, it's, it's probably indescribable. But here they were having to face this, this situation within their lives. Notice it goes on to say uh, <clears throat> in verse 4, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Na uh, Nabal, the Carmelite. And it says that David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now, what a, what a, what a powerful uh, illustration and example of an individual who is facing loss and, and ruin and, and you t I mean, setback is, is, is putting it mildly. 
And yet there were things that David in this circumstance did that you and I can do as well. Listen, I'm telling you right now, friend, listen, all hope is not lost in your life. Uh, there is opportunity if you, know, if you know God, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, he can redeem, and he can restore, and he can recover your life from whatever it is that you are facing. Please believe that, because I'm telling you, sometimes we get ourselves in situations and we just feel like there's no way out, but I'm telling you what, Jesus said, I am the way out. I am the truth and I am the life. And so if we will draw near to him and, fa and, and place our gaze upon the one who's able to deliver us, I will guarantee you he will bring you out. He will give you beauty for ashes. He will cause you to be the head, not the tail. You'll be above only and not beneath. He will restore to you all that the canker worm and the palmer worm has tried to take from you. And he will give you the blessing of heaven because that's who he is. Hallelujah. So I want you to rejoice in what it is that God can do for you in your life. Hallelujah. But, but listen with me for just a moment. I want to ask you an important question. Notice what it says here in this sixth verse. It says that, that a, or, uh, uh, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now I want to ask you a question. How did he do that? Well, I mean, how do you encourage yourself in the Lord. Obviously, there wasn't anybody around him that was encouraging him. You know, so, so what's, what, what, what does, how does that work? What do we do? I mean, do we pull a, a rabbit's foot out of our pocket and start rubbing on it and, you know, maybe get some encouragement out of that? Is it, do we call a, you know, a prayer meeting together, you know, so that we can have everybody, you know, come together and try to console one another? I mean, does that work? I mean, in other words, really think about this with me. How do I or how does one encourage himself in the Lord his God? I mean, like I said, if you call for a prayer meeting, there wasn't anybody in, the, in David's group that wanted to attend. No, they wanted to pick up rocks and stone him. So he didn't have a lot of friends at this moment. But I'm telling you, David did something that is perhaps rare, but I'm telling you, it's so powerful. And I'd like to suggest to you tonight that the way that he did that is, be, is, is that he began to remind himself who his God was and who, you know, not only uh, uh, who his God was, but how big his God was. And not only that, but, but, but uh, what it is, and this is, this is powerful, what it is that God had promised him. He didn't have any place else to look, but, but, but he, he picked himself up, as it were, in his, in his own mind and in his own thinking, in his own, and he began to rehearse these things within his own heart about who God was to him. And I have to believe that before it was over with, he began to declare who his God was in the midst of that situation. Because, you know, it was in that moment, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about a bunch of hype. I'm not talking about, you know, some me mental gymnastics, you know, that got him to this place. No, I'm talking about this thing on the inside of him that rose up, hallelujah, because he began to encourage himself in what God had promised. He began to encourage himself in what God had done. And all of a sudden, he found himself in a different place. Now, with that thought in mind, you know, let me, let me say this, you know, that, that uh, in doing that, you know, I'd just like to suggest to you that what David did was, is he brought God into his situation by reminding himself who God was and how big he was, hallelujah, and the promises that he made. You know what? You can do the same thing. You can bring God into your situation. You know, all of the circumstances that are around you, they've been saying one thing. They have their voice. They're telling you something. But I'm telling you what, God wants to say something else to you, hallelujah. And it doesn't, it has nothing to do with defeat. It has to do with recovery, glory to God, and restoration where your life is concerned. And, and so here's something I want you to do now uh, as we've talked about that, but I want you to notice something else. And this is critically important. 
all right? And, and, and uh, the reason being is, is because it's the difference between winning and losing in this situation. And, and what I want you to notice when we read this together here in just a moment is, is I want you to notice David's approach to God, um, uh, his posture, his, his, his attitude toward God, because, because his attitude and his approach, the posture that he took before God, was not one of resignation, huh? but rather an approach toward recovery. Glory be to God. Read it with me, if you would, in verses 7 and 8. Notice what it says here. It says that David said to a, a, Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, Ahimelech's son, he said, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And this was a, a garment that they put on when they began to seek the Lord. And Abiathar uh, brought this to David. Now notice verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord. Now notice what he said. He said, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue for you will surely overtake them and listen this i love this talk about bringing hope to a hopeless heart he said you will surely recover everything or all in that situation so again you know, I, this is why it's so important for us to understand, you know, this, the, the, our relationship with God. He, he wasn't praying a prayer of acceptance or resignation or, you know, God, I don't know. You know, I guess, you know, somehow or another in your great will that, you know, somehow or another this was just the way it was supposed to be. No, a thousand times no. The attitude, posture, and approach of David was, God, can I pursue them? and recover what it is that's been taken from me. And God, with a hearty amen, said, yes, go for it, and you'll get everything back that was lost. Glory be to God forevermore. You know what the devil means for evil? God can turn into good if we will but just believe in the Lord our God. When we face difficult times, God, he wants us to have confidence, you guys. Listen, he wants us to have confidence that he's going to take up for us in that moment. The Bible says, the Lord is on my side. The Bible says, don't cast away your confidence. It has a great recompense and reward. Nobody wants victory in your life more than God does. He says it has a great recompense of reward. You need patience or endurance that when you've done the will of God, praise God, hallelujah, you're going to receive the promise. I love God's word, don't you? I tell you what, praise God, if it doesn't breathe life into you, I don't know what it is that you're reading. Because the living word of God brings life to the person that will not only read it but believe it that will trust in it and embrace it. Glory be to God. You know, I'll give you this example. If you had a really close, I mean an intimate kind of friend, you know, when, when people go to war together, I mean, when they come back, they're like brothers. Why? Because there's an absolute reliance upon one another. I mean, if I don't have his back and he doesn't have mine, we can both end up dead. But you know, they go into these situations, and I know that you have people like that as well, perhaps in your, in your life, you know, where you're, you're close to them. And I mean, uh, you know, they, they would do anything for you. They would help you, you know, in, in any way that they can. And, and the reason I use this example is, is that, you know, if, if, if I'm in that situation and I have this kind of relationship, and all of a sudden I begin to question whether or not I can count on this person, you know, the reality is, is if that person found out about it, they'd, they'd almost be insulted. And what are you talking about, dude? You know, we have given our lives to one another and, and there's nothing but trust here. Well, listen, the same kind of relationship exists between you and your heavenly father. Listen, he gave you his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, so that, praise God, when you would go through this life, that you wouldn't be going alone that he would be on your side, that he would be for you, that he would want to help you in the time of trouble, that he would like to restore and recover anything that the devil has tried to take away from you. 
please believe that because it's so true. Hallelujah. You don't have to question the integrity of our God. You don't have to wonder whether or not he'll be there in the time of need. My dear friend, praise God, he is only a breath away and even closer than that. So I tell you, he wants to do things for you that will bring recovery and restoration in your life. Hallelujah. But he wants us to trust in what it is that he said. That's the key. You know, I have to know that God is on my side. Praise God. Now, let me, let me say this to you. I, I, I don't want to, you know, just um, <clears throat> overstep the reality of certain feelings that we have when we're facing loss or we're facing ruin or, you know, I mean, we've had huge, unbelievable kinds of setbacks. Because when we experience this loss, you know, within our lives, it can be so debilitating. I've been there. I know you, perhaps, in your past or even now have been there where it just seems like it has just sucked the very life out of you and you just don't know which way to turn. It's not unusual. You know, you just have this, this, this fatalistic sense sometimes of, of, of ruin. I mean, that's real okay? Just like in David's circumstance. I mean, it's unimaginable what it is that these guys, you know, uh, had to face. And it was hard to shake. You know, the Bible says that they wept until there was no more strength within them to weep. And all of a sudden, you know, they wanted to turn on David. They were mad. They were angry. They go from a point of grief to a place of anger. And people, you know, they go through these cyclical kinds of emotions all of the time. But I tell you what, you, at some point, boy, you've got to just get a hold of yourself. And you have to remind yourself what it is that God has said. And you just have to begin to look to the promise of God. And I know that's, that may not be the easiest thing to do. But thank God if you've got others around you that love God and love Jesus, then I tell you what, something can happen to bring about a change within your life. So here's the thing, you guys, regardless of any kind of setback or loss that you may have experienced, listen, I want you to know all is not lost. No, it is not lost, thank God, because God is a God of recovery. He'll do something for you if you'll turn and look to him. Hallelujah. I think about, you know, Ruth again in this story of hers, you know, such tragedy that she experienced, the loss that this woman and even family members had had experienced, and yet God, you know, he brought someone to her that absolutely changed her life forever. Thank you, Jesus. And he can do the same thing for you. But, you, have, you know, here's another thing about this is, is you have to be willing to do it God's way. Sometimes you have to fight. You know, a lot of times, you know, people are talking about Christianity and whatever, you know, they kind of have a pacifist kind of attitude to it all. But I got to tell you, sometimes I'm, the devil's not a pacifist. And I'll tell you this much about it, praise God. If you don't learn what the Bible has to say when it says fight the good fight of faith, then you're going to miss out on what God has for you because he wants to bring recovery into your life. But David, you know, he had to, he had to pick himself up. He had to encourage himself in the Lord. He got a word from God, and I'm telling you what, he went after his enemy. And some of the times in our lives, you know, as a matter of application, we got to go after our enemies. You know, it may be discouragement. It may be dis depression. It could be anything. But I tell you what, praise God, you got to stand up like the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you got to begin to declare who, who and how big your God is. Come on. Because when you start doing that, your giant's going to get a lot smaller. Hallelujah. And not only that, he's going to tuck tail and run, and then you're going to be able, praise God, to come out on the other side victorious. Glory to God. Listen, God has better for you. And, and you know what? You, you might be doing real well right now, but I'm telling you what, God still's got better because that's all he knows. Hallelujah is the goodness of that his character displays throughout the world. But you have to fight, and you have to, here's, a, here's another thing. You have to know, you ha well, let me say it a different way. You have to come to a place of knowing that God wants to help you win. Did you hear me? You have to come to a place of knowing that God wants you to win. Not wonder, not hope, not think about it, but but. But understand that God wants recovery for your life. You may not know how. You may not how that, you understand how that's supposed to work. But I mean, you just have to settle the fact of knowing 
I don't know how this is going to work, but I know that God wants to bring recovery into my life. And, and here's the thing, you know, um, when, when you talk about heaven, I, I was trying to find a way maybe to convey this to you, but this is the best way in the English language, at least that I've been able to come up with, you know, for the time right now. And that is, is that <clears throat> the absolute imperative of heaven I mean, in other words, when you start talking about the will of God or the will of of heaven, the absolute imperative of heaven is to raise people up, to deliver them, to help them. And and, And I can give you numerous examples, but I'll just give you one. For example, you know, the nation of Israel was in Egypt and they were in bondage, and they'd been there for 400 years, and the Bible says that God heard their cry, and I want to read it to you here. It comes from Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7. Listen to this with me. Listen to what, what it is that God said. Come on now, because I'm telling you that, that, that when, when heaven be, gets involved, uh, their intent is to raise people up. Heaven's intent is I mean, is to deliver, praise God, and bring recovery. It says this, the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters, and I know their sorrows. Did you know that he is easily touched with where you are, what it is that you're experiencing, things you're going through, how it is that you're feeling? I mean, he knows all about it. Notice what he goes on to say. He said this, so I have come down. Woo! Glory to God. In other words, he's coming to the place where we are to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now listen to this. And to bring them up. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? The imperative of heaven is to lift people up out of whatever it is that has them bound. So he said here that he was going to bring them up out uh, of that land to a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Glory be to God forevermore. That's what God said. He said, I am coming down and I'm going to lift you up. In another place in the New Testament, Jesus declaring his purpose for being here. He made this statement, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I tell you what, when you have the life of God in you, it brings a lifting, doesn't it? Hallelujah. And that's what he said about himself. Another place, uh, further on, he said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of the Father that sent me, that of all that he has given to me, I should lose nothing. I'm telling you what, God is not in the losing business. God is in the winning business. And then this verse of Scripture goes on to say, but should raise it up the last day. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, God wants to raise you up. He wants to lift you up. Glory to God. He wants to bless your life. You know, a lot of people, you say, well, that's just too idealistic. You know, that's just pie in the sky or whatever. No, that's the will of God. I just got done reading to you what it is with regard to the will of God as to what he wants to do for people. He did it for the nation of Israel. He did it for you and me when he sent Jesus. He did it so that we could be raised up, hallelujah, out of whatever mess hell and sin has caused within our lives. And glory to God, if we'll just chase him down, he'll chase us down. You know, the Bible says this in 2 Chronicles 69. It says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro all over the earth looking for someone to show himself strong in their behalf. Dude, if that's not recovery and restoration, I don't know what is. I mean, the eyes of our Heavenly Father are looking around for someone to raise up, and it could be you. You know, maybe you're that person, you know, right now in your life, you know, you're just, you know, you're weighted down with, you know, cares, worries, anxieties, you know, things aren't, you know, turning out the way that you planned and your future doesn't look that bright. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, (laughs) hallelujah, come on, believe with me that God wants to do something great within you, because he does. I'm not, I'm not just up here, you know, flapping around about this thing. I'm telling you, this is the will of God, but he needs your consent. He needs your engagement. He needs your faith. He needs for you to believe and embrace and trust in what it is that he has said. And guess what? If you'll do that, things will turn around. He'll turn you. He 
will turn your captivity. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. You know, Christ's interests are always, and, they, and it was reflected in his earthly ministry, but his interests where people are concerned is always, everybody say always, 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 always to find people in trouble and make their lives better. Hallelujah. Did you know that God wants to make your life better? And I tell you what, he can do it. Hallelujah. He can flat do it. Glory to God. All he needs, again, is your consent, your faith, your belief, your trust in him. Because, you know, that's why he sent Jesus. He sent him to this earthbound existence, you know, for people that were in trouble or that are in trouble. You know, people are in trouble in the world. If you don't know God, you're in trouble. You know, you may not know it, but the reality is, is because sin has you bound, the nature of sin, you're in trouble. And not only that, but sin brings trouble to our lives. And that's why Jesus became a sacrifice for us all so that sin would not be able to have dominion over us. Aren't you glad for that tonight? I tell you what, praise God, he has come to set the captive free. And people will often say, even in his day, you know, with the religious rulers, you know, he said that he came to set the captives free. They said, well, we were never bound to, you know, anybody. We're Abraham's seed. We're not bound. He said, oh, yeah, you are. You just don't know it. A lot of times, you know, people, they're bound by sin and wrongdoing, and they just don't have a clue. Well, listen to me, my friend. The Bible says that everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there are none that are righteous, no, not one. But the Bible also says that the wages of sin is death or spiritual separation from God, eternal damnation and hell. But the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus offers eternal life to anyone who will believe on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that powerful? Praise God, you know. And so that's a choice that we have. It's not left up to fate. It isn't, you know, some, you know, selective kind of thing, you know, where God chooses some and doesn't the other. No, it's your choice. And the Bible says that whoever will call on the name of the Lord, what does that mean? That means to say, to simply pray and say, God, I need you. You know, to admit the need that you have in your life, to repent of the sinful nature that you have and to ask him to come and be the Lord of your life. Change you forever. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, praise God, it's true. So, you know, here's the thing you have to understand, that when, when heaven steps into a, a, a situation, the intent or the end game of heaven being there, praise God, is to bless and to bring peace and to cause better in that situation. Hallelujah. And you're, I mean, if you're in trouble right now, you're ripe for a victory. Hallelujah. I mean, you're just right in the place where, praise God, God can do some amazing things. You know, uh, uh, he, he commissioned a bunch of guys to go out and preach the gospel, and he made this statement. He says, go, he said, go to the house of Israel, not the Samaritans, because that was where they started. He said, and as you go, preach, telling them, say to this, to them, he says, tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is, is near you. And this is what he went on then to say. He said, heal the sick, claim, uh, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. So here's this picture of restoration and recovery. He's saying, you go tell them that the kingdom of God is here. It's near. And, and, uh, and this is what I want you to do. Heal the sick, cast out devils, praise God, you know, and, and cause blessing to come into the lives of people that have experienced loss or ruin or, or setbacks within their lives. This is just simply the nature of our God. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, praise God, he wants to bring it for each and every one of us. Amen. And, and but, um, let me try to bring this thing down to a close. You know, I get excited about it because, man, I'm telling you what, this will, this will set you free. But here's the thing you need to understand. There are a lot of Christians that are still unsure regarding God's will or his purpose in and for their lives. They're, they're, they're still in the valley of decision about some of these truths that I've just been sharing with you. But I'm telling you, there isn't anyone that is more for you and on your side than your heavenly father. He doesn't want loss set back, ruin, any other of the other things that I may just, it's not, he's not the author of it. He has nothing to do with it. But I tell you what, he is the God who comes and stands with you in that for your deliverance. 
But you got to know that. You know, a lot of people, that, I mean, theologically, they're still confused about, you know, the things that are going on in their life, what is the will of God and what isn't. But thank God he has given us his word. He's given us the Bible, hallelujah. And so if you're unsure about this, you, you have to get settled in your own heart about what it is. And that's why I'm preaching to you. That's why I'm telling you what, what happened in David's life. He wasn't, he wasn't a pacifist. He wasn't a person that was just saying, well, you know, I guess that's the way it's, you know, life, you know, throws you a curve and you just kind of, you know. There wasn't resignation or acceptance in the prayer that he prayed before God. He said, God, can I go after them? And he said, you sure can. And when you do, you'll get everything back. Hallelujah. That, to me, is so incredibly powerful for the child of God to be able to embrace. You know, I'll give you another story. You know, when Paul was on his, uh, he, was, uh, he was being sent to Rome to appeal his case before Caesar. And really, the whole reason being is so he could preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in front of him. Well, on that trip, you know, they ended up shipwrecked. He told them they shouldn't go, and that's another story in and of itself. But they ended up on this island, and they were trying to build a fire so people could be warm and whatever. And while Paul was gathering up some sticks, there was a viper, a venomous you know, snake or something of that nature that latched onto his hand and, and uh, bit him. And, of course, the people of that, that island, they knew all about this snake, and they said, and listen to this. They said, they made this statement. They said, because this has happened, you know, he got bit, for sure, He's a murderer, you know, and, and the, he got away from the sea, but man, his, 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 uh, his, his days, or not even days, but even his, his minutes were, were numbered. Well, you know, when they, after a long time, the Bible says he didn't swell up, he didn't drop dead, he didn't do anything. And so the Bible says, listen to this, these people that were there, all of a sudden, they, the, it says they changed their mind. In other words, they went from one thing to another, just in this fickle kind of moment, and they decided, man, he's a god. He's a god, you know? And, and, and that's my point, you know? Dear friend, you know, as a child of God, we have got to become established and settled in what it is that is true and not be bouncing around all over the place with regard to some of these matters, you know? But yet that's the way human nature sometimes will look at things. People will say, well, I don't know how God, you know, why God is doing this, you know? There must be some special purpose in it all. Have you ever heard that before? Well, if you haven't, you maybe have heard some facsimile of that or whatever. You know, there must be. In other words, they don't know. You know, they're just, you know, doing the best they can to try to figure out and understand why they're in this predicament. Well, the truth of the matter is, is when you read the scriptures, yes, we all face adversities. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Hallelujah. In other words, you know, when things like this come along, you know, it's not like, well, God is somehow involved or engaged in all. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. He's the one that wants to help you get delivered from it. Glory to God forevermore. You'll hear people say, well, you know, I must be out of the will of God. I did something wrong for all this trouble that's come to me. That's a silly way to interpret the experience you find yourself. And, I, and I'm not minimizing what it is that you think, because if you don't know, you don't know. But, you know, it's not true. In no way, shape, or form is this you know, pointing to, and I'm not trying to suggest that people can't get out of the will of God and trouble comes their way, but they know it. But when a person, you know, is, is unsuspecting and these things happen, and they say, well, I must have done something wrong. Listen, dude, if you don't know what, what you've done wrong, then chances are you haven't done anything wrong. Are you listening? Especially as a child of God. Because, you know, if you've got the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you, you know the difference. You know what's right and what's wrong. Are you listening to me? But, but here's the thing you have to understand. That kind of thinking, you know, I must have done something wrong or whatever. If that's true, then the Apostle Paul was out of the will of God about 95% of, of his life because he was always facing trouble. And yet, thank God, God delivered him every time. Glory to God forevermore. This is what... This is what God said, and this, this will bless you as we come to a close. He said that you and I will call upon him. It says, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in, I will be with him in, I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him. Did you hear that? 
I will deliver him and honor him. Hallelujah. That's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Another one, he says, God is our refuge and strength, that he is an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even though the earth was removed, the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. Another verse of Scripture says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. Did you know God wants to deliver you out of all your troubles? What a way to live. Hallelujah. He wants to deliver you. Another verse of Scripture, But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength In the time of trouble, he is their strength. Glory to God. See, God was David's strength in the middle of his trouble. And he delivered him. He caused recovery. He restored everything. Now, he had to giddy up. He had to get up and get after it. But I tell you what, you can do the same thing, and you can be blessed. Glory to God. The Bible says in this same scripture, the Lord will help them that and deliver them. He will deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Another verse of scripture, for in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle. He will hide me and he will set me on high. (laughs) Hallelujah. Upon a rock. Glory to God forevermore. I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I just get blessed reading this stuff. And then finally, Jesus said, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. He said, you know what? In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But listen, listen, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's nothing that the devil or hell can throw at you that God cannot bring recovery and restoration to your life with. Because now, let me say a couple more things here. But listen, God cannot bless ignorance. You know, we've got to come to know these things, and that's why we have our midweek services. That's why we provide this, this teaching so that people can become grounded and settled in the truth. You know, and, and so he can't bless ignorance, and, and nor can he bless disobedience. You can't, you know, be disobedient to God and expect his best. But I tell you what, if you get in the right place and you decide that you're going to be a follower of him, that you're going to get rid of whatever it is that's displeasing to God, and you say, you know what, man, I'm going for Jesus. And it it takes that. It's all in, or it's either all or nothing at all. And that's that's where a lot of people, you know, they kind of, you know, you can't hedge your bets. It's not like, well, you know, can can I do this? No, you can't do a little. But I tell you what, you can go all in. And I tell you what, you will never, ever be disappointed in your commitment. Listen, Commit. You know, people don't like that word. They don't, they don't even want to talk about it sometimes. But I'm telling you that if you want God's best in your life, you have to be all in. And if you are, then you can expect God's best. Thank you, Jesus. He can make it come to pass. So, so let me ask you a closing question here before we go. You know, how, how do you, listen, how do you honestly, honestly think about um, your current situation? You know, if, if in fact you feel like you've experienced uh, loss or ruin, how are you thinking about that? Do you, do you really believe and know in your heart that God is on your side, that he is for you, that, that he is your champion that wants to deliver you? If, if, you, if you question it, it and, and that's not an indictment. It, this is an, a, a moment of examination. You know, if you say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm just not there. I mean, I, I mean, if I'm really honest, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't come to that place. Well, listen, that's okay, but get there. You know, take these verses of Scripture that I just shared with you and think about what it is that God is saying because these things can set you free. Hallelujah. And they can bring real blessing, you know, uh, into your life. Uh, I'll give you some quick examples. You know, maybe, maybe in your past or maybe even currently, you know, you've experienced a divorce. Divorce is, is, is hideous, and it's unfortunate that anyone would have to experience it, but unfortunately, because we're human beings, it happens. You know, but when it happens, you know, there's such a sense of loss, you know, and sometimes people just, you know, they feel like their life will never be the same. But did you know, dear friend, if, you know, uh, the Bible makes it clear God hates divorce, but did you know he, he loves divorced people? He loves you. 
you know, and he's, he hasn't ran off because, well, they made a mistake and it's all over. No, it's not over. It's not at all over. God wants to bring restoration. He wants to bring recovery. He wants to bring blessing back into your life. Maybe you've had financial collapse. You know, debt has just swallowed you up. Listen, I'm telling you, God can turn that thing around. He can bring blessing back into your life to where you have sufficiency and you have those things that you need. You know, it may be some kind of a uh, debilitating disease of some nature or whatever. And and I just got to, you have to understand that, that, that sickness and disease is an enemy. It's not your friend. It's, 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 it's hideous, just like everything else. But here's what Jeremiah 30, 17 says. God said, I will restore health to you. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's, there is hope. There is opportunity. Uh, there's a thing called faith that can begin to bring change where our lives are concerned. So whatever you've experienced in the way of loss, dear friend, you know, God wants to restore what was lost in your life. He, he is not the author of lost, friend. He is the author of recovery. And he wants to do all of those things um, within your life. So, you know, if I'm the cause, I need to change. I can do that, you know. Uh, it, sometimes, you know, things happen in our lives just by time and chance. I don't, I don't really have a, to, uh, a, a way to, to, or I don't have time to really explain what I mean by that. Um, but here's the thing, you know, well, maybe I can. You know, sometimes people, they end up, for example, growing up in a dysfunctional home. And, you know, it's just kind of where they are and where they were brought up and all of that. It's not really anybody's fault per se. It's, it's just where they are, you know. And so, so they, they suffer, you know, the deficiency within that dysfunction that they find themselves having to live in. But here's the thing I want you to know, that maybe that's you, but I'm telling you what, God can bring recovery and restoration into your life so that that doesn't have to be something that's cyclical, you know, that, that went from, you know, the past generation into yours. You can have a better life in God. And so I encourage you in that. And of course, you know, sometimes we experience these things in our lives just by the simple onslaught of hell. Well, thank God Jesus went to a cross and he defeated our enemy, Satan, the devil. And praise God, he gave us the victory. The Bible says he's delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So I'm telling you what, God's on your side, friend. I tell you, I, I trust that tonight has helped you and blessed you in the sense of maybe uh, f- better knowing or knowing further of, of whatever, you know, trouble, whatever challenge, whatever battle that you find yourself in. I'm telling you what, God wants to put you over. So turn to him, look to him, you know, declare what it is that he said, remind yourself and rehearse the past victories you've had with him. And I tell you what, praise God, he'll bring you out. Would you, would you pray with me as we just commit this word to our hearts here this evening? Father, in Jesus name, I am so glad, Father God, for the revealed word of God, what it is that you have made known to us. God, help us to embrace these things where our lives are concerned, glory to God, because Father, I know that you want to put every one of us over. Help my brothers and sisters, those watching this broadcast here this evening, Father, help them uh, to understand these truths and to embrace and take hold of them in their personal lives. And God, I thank you for turning their captivity. I thank you, Father, for turning the whole thing around and causing your blessing to flow into their lives in an abundant in a very powerful kind of way. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Again, let me thank you for being with us this evening. We so appreciate your support of the local church and what it is that we're doing here. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that financially. And um, uh, we'll put those things up on the screen for you so that you can see either by giving online or giving, you know, by texting to give. And even you can use a a post office mailbox and, and send your gift in to help us keep going. We're excited about the future that we have. And there's a lot of good things that are in store for us. So again, thank you for that. And uh, so we'll look forward to seeing you here, hopefully this next Sunday, perhaps next Wednesday night. Uh, And uh, so anyway, God bless you. We love you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.